Hi, and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm here today, as always, with Kelly Presnell. I'm Debbie Lyons. Kelly is the Director of Marketing and PR for Hilton Head Hospital, and it's a treat to have you, as always, to Great. share with us a little bit about uh, who we're going to be talking to today. Yes, today we have um, Dr. Christopher LeBlanc. He's a physician specializing in family medicine, mm -hmm. and he practices at the Bluffton Okatee Primary Care office at the Bluffton Okatee Outpatient Center. Gosh, I know so many people who go out there and absolutely love it. And yeah. does that, does the Bluffton Okatee Outpatient Center function both as urgent care and uh, primary care? Um, it's a primary care office. Okay. And they will take same day appointments and walk-ins. Um, they want to establish a relationship with their patients. Um, it's so important to, for folks to have a relationship with oh. their physician and so that they know the health history, so that if something comes up, you don't have to go to a stranger and seek care. Makes sense. Yeah, and so that's really what we're trying to promote is for people to establish their relationship with a physician and to focus on preventive medicine. With Dr. LeBlanc today, what are some of the things we're going to talk about? I know we are going to talk about establishing a relationship, mm -hmm. but what's the mm -hmm. primary mm -hmm. um, target today? Mm -hmm. Um, healthy living, of course, mm -hmm. um, ob obesity and, and being overweight, that's just a topic that's so important <sighs> and, and can contribute to so many other health um, conditions and diseases. So to have that under control and a little better understanding of, you know, if you do have to lose a little bit of weight, you know, what's the best way to go about doing that? And Dr. LeBlanc's going to share that with the audience today. Well, let's talk to Dr. Christopher LeBlanc here on Healthy Living. Stay with us. We went to the emergency room and thank heavens we did. They discovered that I had two totally blocked arteries and I ended up having double bypass open heart surgery. Well, I stayed in the hospital for just a few nights. To the staff at Hilton Head Hospital, I would express the deepest gratitude that I possess. They literally, quite literally, saved my wife's life. Welcome to Healthy Living. I am here today with Dr. Chris LeBlanc. Thank you very much for joining us. A uh, couple questions before we really get started. Um, I would like to know a little bit about you. Where are you from and how long have you been practicing and what brought you here to Hilton Head? Well, originally I'm from Rhode Island mm -hmm. and um, I went to undergraduate uh, college in, in Maine mm -hmm. at Bates College. And then uh, I stayed in Maine. Are you a sailor? Uh, well, when I was younger, <laughs> okay, I was uh -huh. in, yeah, living in Rhode Island, it's, uh, yeah, absolutely, but it's a requirement, uh, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not a skier, okay. <laughs> so I, I lived in Maine for a long time. Mm -hmm. But um, after undergraduate, I did a year of research at the Brown Orthopedic Research. Oh, and, did you really? And that kind of led me into um, medical school, and I went to New England Medical, which is also in Maine. Okay. And from there, uh, I really just wanted to head south, mm -hmm. somewhere south. Yeah. <laughs> That and, Maine will uh, do it to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I moved to Allentown, Pennsylvania to do okay. my uh, third and fourth year of uh, med school there and, and then uh, followed up with residency. Where did so. you do your residency? At St. Luke's Hospital in Allentown. Oh, did you really? Did mm -hmm. you know family medicine was where you wanted to head? Uh, yes. When I um, applied into medical school, I applied to be a part of the National Health Service Corps which is yeah, explain basic, what that basically is. primary care medicine for underserved areas, mm -hmm. um, whether it be urban or rural. And um, I chose to follow that into rural, and it, had to, it, it led me to South Carolina. Well, you I said you were in Manning? Manning, South Carolina, yeah, and then for you about five years. What makes a practice like that different than, let's say, uh, a big city practice? Well... They're actually not very different. Okay. Big, big city and and rural because um, they're sick people. Okay. And and, and uh, they need a lot of medical attention and and really you serve uh, when you're working in an outpatient center like that mm -hmm. as the front line for a lot of illness to try to keep people out of the hospital who wouldn't have had a doctor otherwise. So uh, it's a challenging medicine, but you certainly. Uh, you have a passion for Experience it. Experience quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And you moved here. You said you'd been here since October. October of this year, yeah. And oh, I'm getting married soon, which is wonderful. Yes, I'm getting married to mm -hmm. Adrian. Well, let's talk a little bit, if we can, about now that you're here at Hilton Head Hospital, you're at the Bluffton Okatee Outpatient Center, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. Yes. You have a family practice. 
You know, I think for some of us, it, it gets confusing. There's, inter there's internists and there's pediatricians and there's urgent care and there. How do you tell your patients or explain what uh, family practice really means? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, the easiest way I, I usually tell people what I do is usually about two weeks old and on. Oh, really? So, you know, that's a family practitioner. So, and and uh, here, obviously, we're located closer to Sun City. I, I don't see a whole lot of right. young, young kids. Right. But uh, Yeah, so the demographics a little shifted. Or, it is, mm -hmm. but um, that's what a family practitioner does. And, and really, you know, everything, I, I don't consider myself only uh, limited to, to one uh, specialty. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a family practitioner, uh, I like to know something about everything. Is the goal for you to, when I think family practitioner, I'm, I'm, and you're getting my bias, mm -hmm. um, I think relationship, I think someone that I take my kids to all the way through, you know, my grandkids, and someone who really knows my family and knows my history, is that, is that? I would say that's pretty accurate, that's why I, I wanted to be in family practice, so. Mm -hmm. You can develop relationships. You do, you know, develop that with people. Whereas a lot of specialties, you don't have that mm -hmm. emergency medicine. You don't, you right. don't have that relationship and that bond with your patients because mm -hmm. you really start to care about them and also how they do. Whether you're not, you're being successful in treating them and, and helping them through, you know, whatever experiences they have. When someone comes to you initially, you have an urgent. Is it urgent care also? You can kind of drop in, or do you? Is it both for you or? I wouldn't say necessarily we're urgent care, but mm -hmm. you know we accept everyone to come on in if if they have they're having a problem. So, mm -hmm. um, but we also obviously see people on a scheduled basis. So, mm -hmm. it's to say urgent care. I don't. I, I kind of misleads people to okay. think that they can't come here for everything else. Okay, and that's okay. fair. So that's why you know we don't necessarily say that. I like to see. Um, you know, my routine patients that are having any everyday problems. And I think one of the things, if I'm hearing you right, is, and what you're saying is, if you have a relationship we, with me, it's not as though you are starting from scratch every time I come in. You kind of have a history or... Well, of course, yeah. I mean, you know, we kind of build on uh, each appointment and moving forward. Well, that makes a lot of sense to me. All right, let's talk something fun. Yeah, for me. <laughs> or not, right? Like, you're like, oh, God, yeah. what are you going to say? Um, but talking about f the demographic that's here, mm -hmm. we have a bit of an older population, mm -hmm. um, or you see with Sun City right here, and I'm included in that. Um, obesity, we, we were talking before as we were walking in about preventative medicine, mm -hmm. about whether I talk to a cardiologist or an orthopedic surgeon or a podiatrist or I swear a dentist, they all say the same thing. Exercise and nutrition, exercise and nutrition, exercise and nutrition. And as I read the paper, every day I read about obesity, both in children and as we get older. Do you view that as a very, um, as a primary health issue that we're dealing with? And, in, and if in fact that's true, where do we begin? Where to begin is the difficult part of that question, mm -hmm. but obviously the first part is, uh, of course, I think it's very important, and as a family practice doctor, preventative medicine to me is the most important, and I really like to take some time for a lot of my patients who are experiencing problems with weight okay. to talk about it, because it's not just a problem here in Sun City, it's not just a problem in Hilton Head, it's a problem throughout this country. Close to two-thirds of our population in this country is either overweight or obese. That's a staggering number of people. What does that mean, overweight or obese? Because if you talk to any woman, I don't care if they weigh 100 pounds or 190 pounds, they feel fat. So that's not what you're talking about. It's based on your BMI. Which is? Your body's metabolic index. Okay. Which is? <laughs> I know. <laughs> a, a measurement, basically, of your height and weight. It's a ratio. Okay. Okay, so... It, it's not always very accurate because you have to take into account somebody's muscle mass. So uh, someone who's very muscular, their BMI may be high, but they're not okay. necessarily overweight or obese where, uh, you know, if somebody's body ma mass index is above 30, right. usually that means you're, you're overweight. So. And why is, that, why is that body mass index so important? Is it, is it I have a better chance of getting sick? Is it that I'm not going to be able to run as far? I mean, what is, why? Well, it basically tells us, for the most part, that you are overweight, mm -hmm. and 
overweight and being obese has with it linked many different medical problems with time. Mm -hmm. For example, diabetes is linked to obesity, heart disease, high cholesterol. All these things are tied in together into mm -hmm. this metabolic profile. So it's, is it a, um, I, you know, again, we in talking to all the docs and they're telling me, you know, obesity contributes, obesity contributes. I hear what you're saying. Why is it so hard for all of us to have that sink in? <clears throat> Yeah, good luck. If you had that question answer, you'd... Yeah, that's a, a difficult question, but the answer is so complex, and that's why it's difficult, because obesity in itself is complex, and actually losing weight is, it's not, if it was simple, everyone Everybody would, would, do would do it. Right? I mean, we have this simple formula in our mind. If we just burn off more calories than mm -hmm. we take in, we can lose weight. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's a nice, simple you know, formula, but mm -hmm. really it's a little bit more complex than that. Um, so... We have so many things pulling at us in different directions, whether it's from media okay, and, yes. and our society promoting uh, unhealthy diets and promoting things that aren't really related to exercise, mm -hmm. uh, that people have a difficult time really figuring out what's going to work best for them in order to lose the weight. Do we all come in with our set of... Um kind of predetermined excuses for why we can't lose the weight. I don't really eat much. I really don't. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a really light eater. I don't, can't believe I, you know, weigh this. I don't know how it happened. What I find usually is that people don't really understand okay. how to properly lose weight. And, and when they do have an understanding of it, they get a grasp that what they've been doing really isn't appropriate. Mm -hmm. Especially if, if they've actually been trying to lose weight. People have a hard time understanding how to do it appropriately. But Dr. LeBlanc, I'm scared you will tell me I can't have my glass of wine, my M&Ms, and my, <laughs> right? And I'm going to have to go run 50 miles when I can barely walk around the block. I mean, I'm sure you hear similar, and I'm, I'm being sort of melodramatic about it, but, but I think the point of that statement is I'm a little scared. I'm a little intimidated. Um, I'm scared that if I change my lifestyle, I'm not going to know how to handle it? Uh, I mean, I think to a certain degree everyone would be scared in order to change their lifestyle, but we also have to understand to a certain degree that if we don't change our lifestyle mm -hmm. in some instances, that the outcome for us is not going to be what we want either. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's the sickness and the disease and the problems that go along with being obese. So do I say to people, are there going to have to be some lifestyle changes? Of course. Do you have to give up everything that you enjoy? Of course not. Okay. Don't be scared is what you're saying. Of course. I tell you what, you're, I, as, as you're talking to me, I can see your rapport with patients, that you are a great listener and you really care. We're going to take a quick break here on Healthy Living, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about more of my favorite subject, obesity, prevention, pre preventative medicine. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We were outside after dinner, Mary Grace was riding her bike and heard a scream that no mother wants to hear. We took her immediately to Coastal Carolina. We could not believe it was a broken jaw. They are gifted to do what they do. And they are there for the community. And as a member of the community, I will be forever grateful. Hilton Head Regional Medical Center is located at 25 Hospital Center Boulevard. When traveling east on William Hilton Parkway, make a left-hand turn on Beach City Road, and the next left, Hospital Center Boulevard, will be located just past the Hilton Head Library. Coastal Carolina Hospital is located on US 278 at Exit 8 on I-95. Telephone is 843-784-8000 on the web www.coastalhospital.com. I was really scared. I'd never been in an ambulance before. Went to the hospital, diagnosed as I was having a heart attack. 
I had tremendous treatment. That continued for the next 24 hours till I came home. Started riding my bike again, started going to the rehab. The advantages of living here in terms of health care are the tremendous services, the staff and the management of Hilton Head Hospital. It all makes for a good story because today I'm better than ever. We are back here on Healthy Living. We're talking with Dr. Chris LeBanc and we're talk we were talking about weight. And in the break you were like, you know what, let's do something positive. Let's talk about exercise. I mean, there are real ways to make a difference, make changes. And it's not doom and gloom, it's kind of exciting. Well, I, I mean, I, well, so. like, I don't know about I mean, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> if we want to be successful, yeah, I think that it is mm -hmm. exciting. It's, it's, it's hard to sometimes think about if, if I do this for so long, months later, I'm going to be successful and actually stick with that. Mm -hmm. And if we take certain approaches to being successful, and there's a method to our madness, we have a better chance of being successful. And a lot of times, you know, patients come in, they want to lose weight, and they're, and, you know, they're, they're talking to me about different diets, or do I have a diet pill or, or something to help them. And the simple answer to that is, no, there's nothing that's really that simple that works. Because what I like to use as a bar for success is two years. Oh, okay? okay. Two years. Have I lost weight from where I started? two years from now okay? okay and a study that was done by the American Psychological Association in 2007 two-thirds of dieters two years after they started weighed more mm -hmm. than they did when they started the diet two years ago is that unreal unrealistic expectations well I think it's partly unrealistic expectations partly the fact that they didn't really go about it correctly mm -hmm. okay uh, everyone wants uh, a neat fix they want it to be easy, but what we really have to do is set up uh, a process in order to be successful. Let me ask you this, as Dr. LeBlanc, as my family um, physician, can you help me um, put together a strategic plan or a treatment plan, if you will, and create interventions that um, you can help me monitor to be successful? Everybody is different, and, and you really, in order to be successful, you you have to tailor it to the individual. So the answer is absolutely yes, you can do absolutely. that. Absolutely. It has to be that way. And, and that's the, the first step that we need to take um, is we need to, to start this off with um, a meeting with your physician is usually what I recommend. Okay. Okay. Uh, to get a starting weight, to take a look at your rituals, mm -hmm. um, your eating habits, um, your Probably. exercise habits. Yeah. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. well, how, where are we starting with? Here. my baseline, yep. Okay, the second thing we need to do is we need to monitor ourselves as we go if we're going to be successful. You have to keep track of your weight. You have to keep track of your calories. Caloric intake is really the most important part of that. Okay. It's a behavioral uh, methodology into our uh, weight loss and our dieting. And by counting our calories, by mm -hmm. monitoring that as time goes along, you can be successful because you really get an idea of how much you're taking in and then you have to burn it off. Okay. okay, that makes sense. And then also, you know, monitoring your exercise. Mm -hmm. Modifying is our next step. Okay, we have to modify our habits from what they were before. But what we have to realize is that when everyone wants to do a diet, they jump in the water. Right. I mean, they just change um, everything right. completely. That's really the inappropriate way to go about it. We need to make small, modest changes and set reasonable, appropriate goals. People come in and say, I need to lose 50 pounds. Right. Holy cow. Right. 50 pounds is a lot of weight. Let's set a more reasonable goal. Let's lose 10. Let's okay. learn how to lose 10 together. Oh, so it's more And then manageable. set up something from there so that you can reach a goal, you can be positive, and then take the next step to continue, you know, our goal. Do you find that as people age and at 57, turning 58, my, my goal now for my health, my exercise and my eating is more geared toward health rather than weight? Do you know what I'm saying? I, I want to be healthy. Yes. I think they're tied in together. Okay. But yes. I mean, you know, as we get a little bit older, yeah, I think we change our diets a little bit to try to eat a little healthier. Yeah. That's because maybe we're realizing that we didn't all along. We kind of have to change some things now in order to continue, you know, be doing the things we like to do. And I want a healthy heart and I want healthy bones and all of those things. What I like to, this is a, an equal 50-50 share in my mind. Okay? okay. Our diet is 50% 
in our exercise is 50%, 50 percent okay so we monitor ourselves we monitor how many calories we take in and we monitor our habits and, and just everything mm -hmm. that I talked about but then we really have to think about exercise okay. as well and when I see people exercising to lose weight it's very rare that I see somebody actually doing it properly and this is where a lot of people learn a lot about what they need to do when we talk about exercise I'm talking about cardiovascular exercise okay we need to always start slow mm -hmm. and with the idea of building up. Well, give me, just for the people who may be confused, and I think a lot of cardiovascular exercise means, is, and examples are. A good example would be to have a stationary bike in, in your house. Okay. And, and that's a good example of cardiovascular exercise. Walking, uh, a treadmill, an elliptical machine, swimming in a pool, whatever you like to do, and, and a lot of that is tailored also to your personality, your body type. Okay. Uh, is it is it too painful for you to walk? Is it too mm -hmm. painful for you to run? Is something non weight bearing like having an exercise bike in your house more successful for you? So cardiovascular. Okay. Cardiovascular exercise, and the key for your cardiovascular exercises as you are doing it, you have to learn how to continuously do your cardiovascular exercise for an amount of time without stopping. Okay. For the first 20 to 25 minutes that we're doing our cardiovascular exercise, all your body is doing is burning energy that you have stored in your liver and in your muscle. Okay, So I see people all the time, they do 15, 20 minutes of cardiovascular exercise and they think that they burned something. Right, they, thank you so much, had a great day. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. great, I'm done. Mm -hmm. But in reality, you never really got to any of the fat stores that you wanted to burn. You just burned energy that we've learned to store over thousands of years. Okay. So after about that 20 to 25 minute mark, and it really just depends on your body type. Sure. Uh, you've run out of that fuel storage, okay? Like a car driving down the road, you ran out of gas, and you had to flip over to an alternative okay. fuel tank. Well, your body does the same thing, except when it flips over, now it starts burning fat as energy so you can continue to exercise. I did not know that. All right. Now, people who are in really good shape, obviously, their body is much more efficient in doing that and they don't have quite as the same fat store mm -hmm. to, to use that. But to make a long story so they short, have, so that's they what ha okay, is happening. So, so they have to do it a little bit longer then as the better shape you're in, you have to kind of continue right. to build. And that's simplifying okay, I got metabolism you. In, that, in that manner. But the longer that you do it over that 20 to 25 minute mark, the more fat that you're burning, the more successful that you'll be. Now this doesn't happen right as we start. That's why I said you have to start slow. Mm -hmm. But when you're monitoring your diet, when mm -hmm. you're modifying your habits, and when you're exercising appropriately, that really simple formula becomes a little bit more maintainable. Burn off more calories than you take in. Now, I hear a lot, again, 58-year-old woman, um, about um, lifting weights. Mm -hmm. That That's a really important part also of losing weight or... <clears throat> I can't agree more. I like the weightlifting, but we have to learn how to proportion our time. Let's say we have an hour in the gym. Right. We know that's it. We need to, if our, if our goal is weight to loss. lose weight, right. okay. we have to proportion that correctly. If you're spending more than half your time lifting weights in the gym during that time, I think that you're most likely not going to be as successful as you want to be in losing your weight. Okay. Now, there is a role for muscle, muscle in, our weight, in our exercise because okay. muscle helps to burn fat. Okay? It helps to burn energy. Mm -hmm. More muscle mass is more effective in that, in that manner. But we really need to be spending, let's say, 45 minutes of that hour doing cardiovascular exercise and 15 minutes of that hour doing weight training. And the other thing that I've heard that I've always wondered about is, um, I don't know how to say it right, shaking it up a little bit. Not, not just every day do 45 minutes on the elliptical, that it's good to, to be, what's, what am I trying to say, to do different things. A variety. Yeah, yeah variety. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You'd get bored, and that's. Let's look at, like I said, this this formula would be really simple, you know, and everyone would be skinny. But True. it's hard to continue right. to exercise and, and doing something that hurts over a long period of time when the goal seems so far away. Mm -hmm. How do I stick with it? You stick with it by adding variety, and that's why you know you have to find something that is pretty consistent for you. But you also like to change it up. Maybe you have an exercise bike uh, one day. Maybe you take a walk the next. Maybe you you swim. You have to keep changing it up. How many days a week, <laughs> pardon me, do I need to be doing this? Fantastic question. Let's look at yeah, it really, no, no, really no. simply. <laughs> yeah. You have to burn off more calories than you take in. Okay, that has to be our goal. Okay, okay. gotcha. So I, I often say, well, if you worked out three times a week, mm -hmm. four days a week, you're probably not burning off more calories than you took in. Makes sense, because I'm eating seven so days So I a week. like to say at, at least more often than not. 
Okay. Okay, at least four days a week. If you want to be successful and, and you know, this needs to be something that you, you have a major goal to achieve, Do four, something to, four to five day. days a week, mm -hmm. you know. And you can change it up doing different things, but let's say like playing tennis or doing those things are active and they're fantastic. But, but they're did not. we really get to that goal of cardiovascular yeah. exercise and sometimes, you know, you have to be realistic and say it's fun, but you didn't you never got to that stage where your heart rate was high enough for long enough that you got to the fat store. Heart rate. I, I hear that you shut you throw that word around a lot. Is yeah. what what give me kind of an overall picture of what a heart rate is and what I need to keep it at and does it matter with age? In one minute or less. <laughs> yeah, minute or less. Uh, yeah. uh, no, I mean with cardiovascular exercise, obviously when you when you're doing a rigorous exercise for a long period of time, your heart rate is gonna elevate. And that's a healthy thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, obviously it has to. And the longer that you can keep it elevated, the more energy you're going to burn and, and the more the closer you're gonna get to your goal of burning that fat. Gotcha. But, uh, of course, with, with different age, with different overall condition, your heart rate's going to vary a little bit. As okay. you get in better shape, it's going to lower a little bit for you, too. So, so really what I hear you say is, come and talk to you, and you can help determine what would be an ideal heart rate for me to maintain or go up to and come down to. Absolutely. It's individual. It's absolutely. You have to tailor to every single individual. Everybody's different, and how they're going to lose weight and how they're going to be successful is different, and we need to work with that. I'll tell you, this time has flown by. It is fascinating to talk to you. Um, you have a lot of information, and I think what I've heard is, as as a f in family practice, you really um, are very comprehensive in what you can help us with. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us here on Healthy Living. Bye-bye now.